Hello everyone and welcome back to another Extreme One Chunk episode. On this account I do everything possible in a runescape chunk before I roll a random new one around me. This means bosses, killing challenges and whatever else I can do in my starting chunk, which is the current castle chunk in Zaya. I use this graphic to easily showcase the main goals in this chunk, but if you want a more in-depth description of the rules and goals, I would recommend checking out the previous episodes. I will link it in the card in the top right. Started doing some Dagonoff trips to collect some raw foods. This is going to be my main method to get 50 cooking, which is required to make chocolate cakes. And I need to make chocolate cakes to 84 so I can cook an anglerfish, which is the last skilling requirement in this chunk. So yeah, I've been doing some Dagonoffs. They drop sardines, herrings, lobsters, and tuna. So collecting raw food for the cooking XP. That's one trip finished. And we got another trip finished. As you can see, lots of variations of raw foods. They also have some other decent drops. I get totem pieces as well. Some unsold hats. So pretty good monster to kill overall. And there is 65 defense on the account. Started working a lot on the combat stats now. Starting to work towards the bosses for the most part. I'm going to need a lot of stats for that. So melee is going to be very important now. If I want to do something super AFK... I grab my axe and I chop you locks. There's 61 wood cutting, which means I can use a dragon axe. But yeah, I'm just going to collect a bunch of locks in the bank and perhaps we can get the pet. That would mean we would finish every single possible pet in this chunk, which would be kind of cool. And yeah, other than that, just going to get a lot of wood cutting levels, I guess. Right, I just got a heart clue with a step that's in the chunk south of me. Unfortunately, we don't have the required items so i'm not going to keep this clue because i cannot equip a rune plate and get a halberd but that's a pretty close hard clue scroll step so i want to be able to kill seracnus in this video with a decent setup and in order to achieve this i need three things i need higher melee stats for seracnus i need grubby keys for food and potions and I need magic levels for magic defense and fire blast which I'll talk about later and I'm going to train on temple spiders in the Forthos dungeon they give me the best rune drops for magic xp they have very low defense and they give me grubby keys the perfect solution but before I can camp them I need to unlock this dungeon and as soon as I enter this dungeon I cannot go back so we have to do some ultimate Iron Man adventures we have to kill a shaded beast in his dungeon and it drains prayer like crazy so my plan is to camp temple spiders until i get enough prayer pots from the grubby chests so i can kill the demon and unlock this dungeon so let's get to work and start killing spiders there we go that's the first grubby key lovely i think i'm going to collect two or three and then see what i get from the chest nice the second grubby key and there is the third key let's open the chest and see if we get some prayer potions right first chest not what we want second chest let's take a look no prayer and the last one man this hurts not a single prayer pot all right i guess we have to go back to spiders collect more keys and repeat until we get prayer pots the unfortunate part is that we are wasting all of these good supplies because I cannot keep it. But that's only going to be the case at the start though. Yo, XP lamp during spiders for 4 agility. One level to go and we can start lamping hunting. Because I need 5 agility for the chasing course west of me so I'm preparing for that grind in the future. Alright, we got 2 keys. Definitely got pretty lucky. Uh, we are under drop rate so we really need that right now let's open these two keys and see what we get wow cerebrus uh, i did get a two dose super restore though so that's a little bit of prayer and the second key wow also cerebrus that is a pretty rare drop i think so we have one super restore in total now which is not enough i think so we have to go back and get some more keys, but it is a decent start. All right, there's two keys again. I think we got seven keys in like three or four hundred kills now. So definitely the RNG that we need right now. Let's check the keys. One prayer pot drop and we are good to go, I think. All right, here we go. 
Yes, there it is. Two, three of those spray pots. And we got dragon dart tips. Which is an interesting item from the chest. Because it means I technically have to fletch a dragon dart. Uh, however, I'm not able to train fletching yet. So that's something that's going to be happening after we get out of this chunk. Which will not happen for a long time. But yeah, once we get the ability to train fletching, I have to get 95. Right, we did get prayer though. Uh, we have two and a half potions now, which I think is enough to kill the shaded beast. Okay, we should be fine. We still have prayer left. This was kind of scary. I did not hit at all at the start, so I was a bit worried, but... Big obstacle out of the way on this account. We have the temple coin. Awesome. Alright, so we put this temple coin in the stone relief, and we get a weird tunnel unlock. That brings me to the tenor room and the altar room. And now the next thing I want to do is basically use 200 baby dragon bones on this altar. The first 100 will unlock the XP from the altar. And then the next 100 will give me the temple key. And with the temple key, I can unlock all of the doors in this dungeon. And go back and forth between the doors. I can basically start training here without locking myself in. In order to use the temple coin, I had to use one teleport. Because the dungeon is still one way and my only way to get here is via the catacombs. Because I'm not able to use the stairs in the dungeon. And now that we've done that, I can basically unlock this full dungeon. A tiny but necessary exception to make this chunk work. Nice little level, 68 defense. I set up this room in a way that nothing is aggroing me because if the red dragons attack me... I will die because they can hit like 50s. So nothing in this room is aggro, but I still have access to the altar. So I just have to kill 200 red dragons, use all the bones on the altar, and finish my little ultimate Iron Man adventure, I guess. There we go. That's the first 100 bones used. I now get XP from this altar. And I'm actually very close to a prayer level. So we should get that level with this inventory. We got three times the XP on this altar, which is amazing. And there's 52 prayer, which unlocks the highest level prayer I can use in this chunk, which is smite. Pretty nice. There we go. Got a nice grubby key from the red dragons. I will actually be able to keep the supplies from this key because I can open it when I'm done here and bank the supplies, which is going to be important in the future. There we go. There should be the last few bones. The temple key has been unlocked on the account. So nice to get that out of the way on this account. The dungeon is completely unlocked now. Wow, that was a very nice key. We're going to bank some of these supplies. And there we go. Use the key on this gate. That's one out of two doors unlocked. And we also use the key on this gate. And officially, all the doors are now unlocked. I can go back and forth between the doors i can start camping on monsters here i can start collecting supplies i don't have to worry about locking myself in this dungeon which is an awesome feeling so that's amazing subscribe so now that we have officially unlocked this dungeon i can start working on training up the stats uh, the magic levels the melee levels to kill seragnus and i can also bank all the keys and the loot so let's get started i started using all my runes and we ended up with 38 magic so far. Not bad. And we got a key in the process. There we go. First big melee milestone coming in. 70 defense. Going to keep 70 defense now and switch to attack. And work on 70 attack next to get 70 base melee stats. Someone told me to kill some undead druids for fun. And they're absolutely terrible to kill. 
with the current setup that I have, so I'm definitely going to wait. But I did manage to spoon an air battle staff. One in 50, I've only killed 30. That's a very nice surprise because that's going to be my best in slot uh, magic staff. Unlimited air runes, very important. Another grubby chest for egg potatoes and another super set. Perfect. We're going to need all these foods and pots for the bosses. The egg potatoes heal 16. I can also get sharks and obviously the super sets are amazing. So this chest is so important in this chunk. And that's 10 grubby chests open so far. All right. So let me quickly show you uh, the bank. We have seven keys in the bank so far. And this is what the potion tap is looking like. Mostly just trading my melee stats, collecting keys, opening some of the keys and banking some of the keys. Just start working on the uh, food and potion collection. Missed a level, but that's 70 hit points. Nice level coming in. Never thought I would like the zombie random, but it actually allows me to bank stuff for free. I'm currently at spider, so it's basically a shortcut to the bank. Clean up my inventory and extend my spider trip. Cool. And we got zombie gloves and trousers so that's the full zombie outfit completed very nice still working on all the random event items and emotes yo a turtle shell coming in with some bonds thank you so much for the support beast i got a heart clue from temple spiders and i forgot about this clue step but it's a ceridomen wizard five chunks away from me uh, it's not the closest heart clue step i can get however I think it's the most useful one because the Sarah wizards have some drops. And it's not like I'll be able to complete the clue anyways. Uh, because it always has multiple steps. So I think I'm just going to keep this one in the bank. And on the day we unlock this chunk. I can kill some Sarah wizards I guess. And we will not get hard clues from NPCs anymore. Which I kind of like. Because I have to kill a lot of hellhounds and temple spiders. So yeah. Keep this one in the bank. There we go. 70 attack. We are really working hard on the melee stats. 70 base melee now. The next thing I want to work on is strength levels. Get some more max hits. Looking good guys. Looking good. Another nice strength milestone. 75 strength. My goal level is 81 strength. Because that level allows me to get a max hit on attack and defense. And my main stats for Serechnus I think... 80 attack, 85 strength, and 80 defense should work out. But yeah, that's obviously quite a while away. We still have a lot of training to do, but that's the goal melee stats I have in mind. Did some more wood cutting, and I managed to get the Lederhosen hat. So we're only one piece away from the full set. Awesome. This is what the random event lock looks like right now. So four items away. I've been AFKing some yew trees. We are over 400k woodcutting XP right now. I'm currently doing some editing. So thought I'd do some woodcutting. And we finally got the first bird nest on the account. Zaya trees are absolutely scuffed. Well, at least this chunk. These are the only trees that give me seed nests. So let's see what we get. A willow seed. Okay, not bad. I will start collecting these in the bank. All right, will we get another beekeeper piece? Nope, we got flax, but that's very nice to collect in a bank as well, because we have a spinning wheel two chunks south of me, so... This low alk will give me 41 magic. I can now use death runes. Uh, however, I'm not going to use any until I have fire blast. I'm mostly only training my magic with all the other runes I have. And then once we get 59, we're gonna send all the death runes. Quick bank update, we now have... 20 keys in the bank beautiful another strength level and quick update on the stats and we are getting close to 90 combat already which is awesome all from basically killing catacombs monsters and spiders all right we collected over a thousand chaos runes from temple spiders again so going to use all of these runes and see what magic level we can get with the runes Alright, we have a few runes left and we are 47 and a half magic. Really starting to get some nice levels. We're getting close-ish to High Alk as well, which is going to be very nice. Fishing XP random for 25 fishing. 
Right, I just got a book of knowledge and I'm one XP random away from my five agility goal level. But I'm actually going to wait until I get a genie uh, because I don't need to lamp more agility. So I'm going to use the book of knowledge on Hunter instead and get a bit of a head start on that because I get five more XP. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start the Hunter lamping journey, I guess. Going to need a lot of XP randoms for this. Big level incoming. 80 strength. Oh, that looks beautiful. We're already up to an 80 skill in melee. 70 attack and defense and 80 strength now. One more strength level and we're going to switch to probably attack. Still working on opening the chests and look at all these beautiful supplies in the inventory. All the foods, the runes, the potions. This chest is actually really good for Iron Man accounts in general. Ooh, that's the item I was hoping for. We got the orange egg sack, the first recolor for the Seragnus pet, which is on the collection lock. So one of the items I have to get in this chunk, but I didn't really put it on the goals list because it's such an easy item to get because I'm opening hundreds of chests probably in this chunk. But yeah, that's the orange one. We now have the blue one to go and we are on 34 chests opened. It's one in 25. So yeah, awesome. One of the two completed. And there we go, that's 81 strength. We are now finished with strength training for a while. Next up, we are going to switch to attack and go for 80 attack. I should be able to hit 19 on attack style now. All right, we are here in front of Seragnus. We are going to try kill with the rune scimitar and see how bad it is. I have enough food and pots, so I should be able to do this, but I don't have high hopes for the rune scimitar because it's slash style and the boss is weak to crush. So let's see how this goes. Alright, this should be the kill. There it is, the first Seragnus kill count on the account. And that took 10 minutes, which is not great. Uh, I didn't actually use that many supplies for this kill, but it's not worth the potions and food yet and i am definitely going to need some upgrades and there's one upgrade i can get which will make a huge difference and that's the rune maze and to get a rune maze i need magic levels because i have an idea i can kill steel dragons with fire blast so we are going to work on that soon and try and get that upgrade because we are not going to kill hundreds of seragnus with a rune scimitar that's very bad idea but yeah, good to see how long a kill takes. I have all the information I need. We are back to training. Yo, we are doing some wood cutting and we got a genie. And this is a pretty special lamp because it will get me five agility. There we go. And that officially finishes the agility lamping grind. Only level five, not too bad. But yeah, all the lamps are going into Hunter as mentioned before. We got a mime event and this event will unlock all of the emotes which means we are officially done doing mime events. We have all the emotes and we have the full random event outfit so nice slowly completing uh, the random event section. Quick bank update we have been training and killing thousands of temple spiders. We have 30 keys in a bank right now very nice. Over 100 sharks and over 100 egg potatoes. So that's looking pretty good as well. And the potion tap is starting to look beautiful. Almost 10 supersets, a bunch of prayer, defense pots. Uh, yeah, looking really good. The grubby key grind is paying off. We got another grave digger random and unlocked the zombie dance emote, which means we are done doing the grave digger random. We have all the emotes and the full outfit now. So another random event finished 35 ranged killing some dark wizards to try and get the top for a magic attack boost and there we go that's the rope top did not take long at all that was the last magic item i needed for maximum magic attack for this chunk um i'm going to start using a lot of my runes again and i want to really get to 59 magic so this top will be handy for all the magic training. We have nearly a thousand chaos runes again. And this is the first level 49 magic. Let's see how many magic levels we get this time. 
Last magic level I'm going to get with the Chaos Runes, 52 magic. Pretty nice, but that isn't 55 yet, so I have to come up with some other way to train magic. I really want to get these magic levels now, so let's get creative. Been opening some grubby chest for potential death or law runes, and that's the blue exec. That's the second exec recolor, so we have officially completed them. I will get many more of these, but really cool to have in the collection lock. And there we go. That's the first dupe, another orange exec, right after the blue one. Alright, first magic level with the law runes, 53 magic. Can I use Earth Blast? I decided to telegraph face masks for magic XP. Uh, this is probably the most one chunk thing out there. I have a bunch of law runes saved up and I can't do anything with them right now. Um, I will get many more in the future, so I don't mind using a couple hundred. But yeah, I can telegraph for XP, so let's get 55. And there we go, that's the little magic grind finished. 55 magic, I'm now going to use all of my nature runes, clean out my bank, uh, grab everything I can high hulk and go back to spiders. And a nature rune should get me to 59 magic. All right, we high hulked for around one and a half hours, clean out my bank, um, made a couple hundred K and we can now use fire blast, which is awesome. We also managed to get three grubby keys in this trip, which is amazing. And yeah, I have a lot more magic defense now, which is going to help out for Seragnus. And I'm able to kill steel dragons, I think. So we're going to give that a shot. So the method I found for steel dragons is pretty simple. I first lose aggro at the fire giant spot. And once I lose aggro, I hit the dragon with fire blast. And then go back to the safe spot, log out, and basically repeat that process. Or I can hit the dragon once and take one hit from the dragon back. But that method requires food. Both optional methods. Uh, I'm going to experiment a bit. It is going to be very slow, but it should work out. All right, we got another kill for rune knives. There we go, 60 magic on the account. Very clean level. I just lost my hardcore. Um, I misclicked into the room and both dragons aggroed on me. And one of them hit a 50 and the other one hit like a 30 or something and I literally could not do anything. I don't have teleports. I clicked on my cake instead of my shark and I died. Um, but honestly, I'm not too upset about it. I mean, I was probably going to die at some point on this account. The main point of this account is the, the chunk concept, not so much the hardcore. I also think in the far future I would unlock a chunk where I would lose it regardless without being able to do anything about it. For example, a wilderness chunk. So it is what it is, uh, no hard feelings. We continue as a regular Iron Man. But yeah guys, dragons are pretty strong without anti-fire. I basically did an Alfie. Look at that beautiful thing on the ground. I guess we sacrificed the hardcore to get this beautiful drop. The rune maze has been obtained. That's going to make the spider grind so much better. It only took 15 total kills, so that's half the drop rate for the rune maze. There we go, 75 attack, beautiful level. I'm really curious how much faster Seragnus is going to be, and as mentioned at the start of the video, we basically completed all three goals. We aren't exactly done with training melee yet, but I think we do have enough to do some Seragnus kills. But we got our melee stats up by a bunch. We collected a lot of keys and supplies and food in the bank. So that should be good for Seragnus as well. And we got the magic levels and the rune maze upgrade. So it's time to kill some Seragnus and see how much better it is. I'm rocking the prayer pot, the super set, some of the foods and the rune scimitar to slash the webs. This is pretty much how my inventory will look like. All right, time to slash the web. Let's see how this Seragnus kill goes. There we go, first kill with the rune maze. I can definitely tell a big difference in accuracy and that also should give us a combat diary task. Kill it with a crush weapon, very nice. I think the time was six minutes or so for this kill, but I think it can go down a lot more. So probably like between four and six minutes per kill, which is like 
two times faster than a rune scimitar, which is amazing. There we go, another kill, three kill count, and we got a heart task. I don't really know what that task is. Let me check that out. Okay, let's take a look. Kill Seragnus without her dealing damage to anyone. Wow, so that means I pray afflict all of the attacks correctly. Awesome, that's, that's a cool task to get. I will go for all the combat tasks, by the way. I think there's maybe one I cannot do. Um, but yeah, I should be able to do every combat task as far as I can. So what I'm currently doing is every time I get a Seragnus kill, I will walk to the altar, restore my prayer points and then walk back. That way I don't have to use prayer potions. It will take a little bit longer, but I think that's okay. I think once I get the cudgel, I'm going to start using some of my prayer. But for now, going to do altar kills. So if you're wondering how I'm dealing with the Seragnus minions, I'm basically killing them when they spawn. For now, I think that's the best strategy. Uh, they spawn at 266 and 133 health. I try to pray afflict the mage one because that one hits me the hardest since I have uh, melee defense armor. And after the major is dead, I run back to the Seragnus boss, pray afflict the melee hits and kill the melee minion. And it's been working pretty well. Sometimes I get really bad RNG because I don't have the biggest DPS yet. But for the most part, I don't use more than one or two foods per minion wave. And the minions are really the only thing that are damaging me during the kill, so don't actually use that much food per Seragnus kill. Alright, last kill of the trip for Weapon Poison. Ooh, that is the best tier Weapon Poison. I can use that on a Rune Dagger. That might come in handy in the future for uh, Steel Dragons. Decent drop. Another kill count for... Elite Clue Scroll. Seragnus is one of the best hardened Elite Clue droppers in the game. So I think I'm just going to keep this Elite Clue. That way I'm not going to get any Clue Scrolls from this grind. I don't really want to see a bunch of Clue drops every day. Knowing that I can never do them anyway. So not that relevant for now. And I thought about a pretty good method for this grind. I'm going to bring one or two Grubby Keys with me when I start a trip. Because it's going to save me a lot of time in the long run. I can basically use the key on the chest in this dungeon when I run out of food. And extend my trip that way without having to bank. Because the bank is a lot further away than the chest. And if all I need is food and a couple potions anyways. I might as well use the key. So yeah, pretty nice. I'm using the dungeon how it's designed. Alright, and this Ragnus kill is going to be number 10. Which is going to be a combat achievement task. There we go. Mythal or very nice. Seragnus, novice. I think the next kill count task is 50. But yeah, double digits kill count. Honestly, the kills are not bad. But I don't want to grind it out yet. Because I want to get my combat stats up a little bit higher. So I can get slightly faster kills. Save a little bit more food. And uh, get a bit more out of my super pots. Before I start to camp the boss. But I think I'm going to do that in the next episode. We've opened the grubby chest over 50 times now. Potion tap is looking beautiful. We have a lot of potions saved up and food as well. We are basically ready to grind out Seragnus. All we need is more combat stats, more magic levels. And yeah, we are ready to grind out the cudgel and some of the other really nice items from the boss. We did a lot of things in this video, really progressing the account nicely. I'm really enjoying it and playing the account a lot. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series as well. If you aren't subscribed and you got this far into the video, I don't know what you're doing. You don't want to miss the next one. Like the video to send me good luck on the Seragnus cudgel and I see you next episode. Have a great day.